Hello friends, my name is Ari Thurger and this is the third and last video of this series using the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim to illustrate this subject, the Norse Afterlife. On the previous videos I have talked about the concept of religion and the spirit, trying to understand how our modern society was shaped by certain Hebraic religions and certain Asian spiritualities and philosophies, which constrained us to a certain way of thinking and when we try to understand pagan beliefs, it's hard to let go of our collective Western social thinking. I've also talked about the concept of the Underworld, the Ancestors and the Draugr. And as you have seen in these videos and all my other videos, I tend to focus on archaeological evidences. Even the modern pagan movements, especially when it comes to Norse traditional pagan beliefs, people tend to focus solely on the Eddas and the Sagas to understand the pagan view of ancient Scandinavian societies. But the Eddas, as well as the Sagas, were written much later when Scandinavia was already under the influence of Christianity and had contact with other religious realities. If we want to truly understand the pagan view of the world our Norse ancestors had, we must literally dig the past, the pre-Christian past. Prehistoric and protohistoric archaeological evidences show us a spirituality that in many aspects go against the Hades, pointing into a true pagan belief uncorrupted by certain religious beliefs which do not agree or even adjust to the Norse and Germanic realities. So in this video I'm going to talk about the Hades and the concept of Valhalla. Let's start with the Hades. As you already know, the Hades date back to the 13th century and deals only with themes related to poetry and a great mixture of many mythologies into one. The poetic Edda is a medieval Icelandic compilation of Scandinavian oral traditions which add many changes and influences throughout history. In the prose Edda, Snorri Sturluson explains the way of teaching the Icelandic poetic art and when it comes to mythological accounts, by the Christian influence of the author, the structure of his work ends up resembling that of the Bible, which facilitates its somewhat reckless use in the present day. The Eddas provide multiple destinations for the life after death, but all associated with a certain deity. In the prose Edda, Hell is portrayed as a goddess and not simply as a sub-region of the underworld or the afterlife itself, which shows the influence of other religions. Another aspect, the one who brings death and guides the dead in the underworld is Odin, or used to be Odin. During medieval Scandinavia, Hell started to appear as a figure leading a function that was originally Odin's job. Moreover, Hell's portrayal as a pestilence, the formed malignant figure, no doubt comes much closer to the perspective of the afterlife from religions that deny reality, such as Christianity, building up a fear of the underworld, fear of the infernal realm. Another aspect is that during medieval and modern Scandinavia, to the mythology it was added the equivalent of Asgard with the sky at the top of the tree Yggdrasil. It became easy to associate Asgard with the Christian paradise. The dichotomy becomes obvious and acceptable, pleasant, appealing to modern people, influenced by a Western religious worldview shaped by Christianity. And then we have Valhalla, which appears to be also an equivalent with heaven, and hell its opposite, the Christian hell. But let's take this thought into consideration. If death in battle was worth more than life, the Nordic peoples had become extinct. Why live if dying in battle leads to paradise, becoming a martyr and go to paradise, serving a specific deity and killing and dying for that deity? That is a notion that only makes sense in religions that deny life and reality. Norse paganism accepted life and reality. Religious conflicts in ancient Scandinavian societies existed, especially during the Viking Age, but they weren't about religion, they were about politics. While Christianity, for instance, made wars in the name of God, in the name of fanaticism and to convert people by force. As I've said before, the notion that most people have of the afterlife is influenced by individualistic religions. It's perfectly natural for most pagans to see the afterlife in a Christian manner, because these details are so deeply rooted in our collective mentality that it is difficult to perceive them. 
So now speaking about Valhalla, this notion of a place in the afterlife pretty fast became the notion of heaven and pop culture helped a lot in that. Valhalla became heaven and hell became the Christian hell. Heaven versus hell, reward versus punishment. Obviously, I'll make a video solely about Valhalla, but I think it's important to speak of it in here so we can better understand the ancient Norse pagan notion of the afterlife. Now, if we speak about Valhalla, we must speak about the warrior cult. There is a clear glorification of death in battle when we deal with the concept of Valhalla, but not a mindless glorification that led people to blindly meet their doom because they were expecting to go into a better place after death. For instance, the Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf, it deals with the concept of battle in a much clearer way. And it is evident that the warrior does not surrender to death simply thinking about the afterlife. In fact, the warrior knows that he does not have much choice. His destiny is already defined, and he only has to accept the order of things and live life and accept duty in the best way possible. Who decides a victory or defeat is the word, fate, and not his courage or desire to go to Huden. To the Norse, the reputation and honor of the warrior in the living world was far more important than the if, hypothetical fate of the soul. It wasn't about when or where, but how people faced life. On the other hand, if we analyze the criteria for going into Valhalla and remembering that to the Norse and Germanic societies the body and spirit were linked and not separated as two different realities, we realize that there are some rules to enter Valhalla. You need to have your body destroyed or disabled in battle, or through fire. The same way offerings were given to the gods, by destroying, disabling them, or burning them. As I've spoken on the previous videos, destroying the matter to release the spirit. Not everyone went to Valhalla, only nobles and warriors. Upon death, nobles had to have their bodies burned if they were not killed in battle. The point is, a destruction of the matter was needed to release the spirit, the force, the Megin. Alright friends, this is the last video of this series and I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't worry about Valhalla, I will delve deeper into that subject on another video. Thank you so much for watching and for being in here to support this channel. See you on the next video and talk for it all.